Have you ever found a piece of rock that you thought maybe might have gold in it? It's an important skill to be able to identify gold in rocks. And if you're going to prospect for gold or, you know, go out looking for gold, you know, being able to identify gold in rocks is well, what you need to know. I get a lot of people who contact me through my YouTube channel. And the most common question I get asked is, Hey, Chris, I found these rocks and I think they have gold in them. Can you take a look at my pictures and tell me if I have gold or not? To tell you the truth, I've had people send me pictures, like send me five pictures of the same rock. And my thought on two of the pictures is, well, maybe that is gold. And on three of the pictures, I look at saying, no, that, that's not gold. But it's five pictures of the same rock. And so that's what I'm saying. Sometimes it looks pretty obvious and sometimes it is pretty obvious. But other times it's not so obvious. And the problem with photographs is a lot of times it's blurry cell phone photographs. It's really hard to tell the details. What I'm offering instead is something for you to learn the skill of being able to identify a gold in rocks. So we're going to look at stuff that people commonly mistake for gold and you know how to test for it. We're going to look at these different factors of color, luster, conductivity and stuff. Uh, we're going to talk in the end about easily visible gold and not so easily visible gold and what to do about it and if you think that you might have found some good ore. So the first factor is color. What's really important for gold is the luster. Pretty much all gold has a metallic luster. If they're not shiny like a metal, probably not gold. And then there's even minerals that are yellow and, and yellow gold and have a kind of a metallic luster and still aren't gold. Let me start by showing you the examples of what people send me and some positive and negative, you know, what gold looks like and what doesn't look like, what things people mistake for gold and what real gold looks like. And we're going to kind of trade off and go through that. So we're going to go through that and we're going to start with limonite, which is the yellow earthen material that people often mistake for gold. Let's take a look. Some of you may be surprised, but this is the mineral most often sent to me in photographs asking if it's gold. And you know, you look at this and you think, well, it's you know, you have yellow material, and actually, the dark brown and the yellow gold color are basically the same mineral. It's a mineral called limonite. It's an iron oxide. It, it's chemically basically the same as rust. It's iron oxide and some moisture. And you know, the big difference between this and gold is that gold is a metal and it has a metallic luster, whereas this is kind of the right color, but it just looks nothing like metal. I mean, it has the, the luster of a brick or a, or a piece of concrete or something like that. And nobody's going to pick up a piece of concrete and think, oh, this is a metal. Uh, but people want to believe what they want to believe. And th this mineral is often found with quartz. So you can find you know, bits of this in quartz because uh, pyrite, which is a common mineral found in quartz, which is iron sulfide, um, when pyrite oxidizes, it can form this yellow material. And so you get quartz with this yellow material in it, and people hope want to know, want to believe that it's gold, but, but it's not. Now this is a seven and a half ounce gold nugget that some friends of mine found a few years ago, but just for comparison's sake, look at this. It doesn't look earthy. It doesn't look like a chunk of yellow concrete. It looks like a metal. It shines. And even though gold isn't always super shiny, it almost always has this kind of a metallic luster. The next most common thing I get asked about is this. Now this is shiny and metallic and certainly the right yellow color, but this isn't gold. This is mica and it's a very common, in fact, it's among the most common minerals in earth. 
and it uh, forms in a lot of rocks. There's a lot of rocks that have significant mica in them. And sometimes the rocks have yellow mica like this. Now, mica comes in all different colors. If you look at it straight on, it does have a kind of metallic look and it does have kind of a, uh, the right color. At least some of this does. The other colors don't look so much like it, but this color does. Now, the thing about mica is that it's, occurs in sheets. It grows in these sheets. And if you look face on to the sheet, it does look kind of metallic, but it's a kind of an appearance like looking at a roll of saran wrap or something like that. If you look at it, it looks metallic, but you know, with, with this stuff, you can take a nail and if you scratch hard on the piece, it'll kind of break it up into little glittery fragments. And if you look at the edge of a crystal, the edge doesn't look metallic at all. And you can break that up, like I say, with a nail into sheets. And the other thing is, is that if you get the sheets thin, just like a roll of saran wrap, you roll off one sheet of saran wrap, it doesn't look metallic. It's perfectly transparent. And the same with the thin sheets of mica, uh, they start getting transparent. And the one thing about mica is, you know, one thing about gold anyway, is that gold is not transparent. Mica is in thin sheets. Finally, we get to pyrite. And while pyrite is the stuff when it's fresh anyway, looks the most like gold because you can see it definitely has a good metallic luster. It's not just the metallic luster is all over the piece. Uh, and, sp and it's, of course, it's the classic fool's gold, right? But uh, it's not something I get a lot of um, because simply pyrite, if exposed to the surface, air and water, that kind of thing, over time, it just turns to rust. And so when people pick up stuff on the surface, they may find something that once was pyrite, but now it's brown or yellow or something, and it doesn't really look like gold. But pyrite, you know, if you're looking through an old mine dump or something like that, it's very, very common to find quartz with nice uh, pyrite crystals sprinkled through it. And, you know, for someone who doesn't know to recognize pyrite, it's easy enough to think it might be gold. Now, here's a close-up of a good-sized pyrite crystal, and there's a lot of things we can learn here. First, you can really easily see the square or cubic shape that the crystal often forms in, although not all pyrite forms into this cubic crystal shape. You can also see the striations, the lines across the crystal face, both in the big crystal and the little crystal in the face, both have lines that go across the crystal surface. That's not something you'll normally see in gold. But perhaps the most, um, and of course, the other thing is that a lot of times pyrite has this greenish cast to it. But uh, the thing that's most um, identifies pyrite over gold is its fracture and brittleness. If you look at the edges of this cubic crystal or the square face there, you can see chips all around the edge where it's been bumped and, and knocked and broken. And the, the, uh, the fracture is a kind of a circular fracture. It's called a conchoidal fracture. It's basically the same kind of fracture as, as glass. Uh, it breaks this way because it's very brittle, just like glass is brittle. Whereas gold, of course, if it's struck, it smashes down, it bends, because gold is very malleable and bends and mushes down. It, it changes its shape easily. Whereas pyrite, it's brittle. You hit it, it shatters. You know, one of the things they do when they're teaching folks how to recognize counterfeit money, you know, to tell the difference between a real dollar bill and a fake one, is they show them a whole bunch of real money. And that's kind of what we're going to do. We're going to go through a bunch of pieces of real gold, not fake gold, but are not stuff that people would mistake as gold, but the real thing. So you can get more familiar with it. This is a 17 ounce specimen of leaf gold from Northern California, from the mother load country. This is some real gold actually in a quartz vein in an underground mine down deep in the earth. Here's the quartz as it normally is impaled with a bunch of gold. 
Here's a line of very fine quartz crystal, or gold crystals in a line in some quartz ore from Nevada. And the gold actually in this is very, very fine grained. If you were to look at it with a, a high magnification, you'd see that it's not just one line, but a whole bunch of little pieces that are kind of stuck together. Here's a sheet of leaf gold in a, a dark iron stained ore specimen from Colorado. Uh, but this individual sheet of gold is just like a, a thin foil. Here's a real gold quartz specimen from Arizona. This is actually a whole section of vein. You know, a one inch thick vein can still be full of gold, just as this just as this example shows. Here's a nice specimen of quartz with gold sprinkled all through it. You can see the gold is kind of in lines. It, it almost it formed in the cracks between the quartz after the quartz had formed. And here is another piece of quartz with real gold in it. And you can see the beautiful metallic yellow um, that's not uh, cubic crystals. This is what real golden quartz looks like. This piece was found in Northern California with a metal detector. And finally, on whatever kind of gold you're finding, whether it's easily visible or not, no matter, no matter what test you're going, if you have good gold, to, in order to find it, to find real gold, it's a skill and it takes knowledge. And in order to uh, have that knowledge, I wrote a book. It's called Fistful of Gold and it's to impart to you the knowledge of 40 plus years of me being out there looking for gold and a, a degree in mining engineering that I have. So I, I wrote that to help you guys better be skilled at finding gold and have more success. And I also am partnering with a prospecting outfit called High Plains Prospectors. They sell all kinds of equipment from pans and sluice boxes to metal detectors. Well, pretty much you name it. So I'm going to tell you a little bit more about my book and about High Plains right now. This is my book, Fistful of Gold. And like I say, it's an encyclopedia of prospecting. And you know, if you want to go out and find your own nuggets, you want to go find your own gold, you want to be successful, well, it's about what you know. Uh, the guys who are finding gold, they have a knowledge. It's a skill. You know, I sometimes compare it to like being an electrician. It just buying a voltmeter at Home Depot doesn't make you a journeyman electrician. And Having a sluice box or a metal detector or gold pan doesn't make you a successful prospector. It's about what you know, right? And that's why I wrote this book. Like I say, it's an encyclopedia. It has stuff that really is um, for beginners. It has stuff that's for mid-level guys that have learned the basics and want to learn more. And it has even some more advanced things for guys that have some experience but want to learn even more. And, yeah, I've actually run into people in the field where uh, they tell me something and I say, well, that's a pretty advanced concept. Where'd you learn that? And then they said, I read your book. So, you know, it has a real high rating on Amazon and it's available either from Amazon or from High Plains. Now, High Plains Prospectors, uh, they're an outfit that's a mail order prospecting equipment dealer. They have everything you can imagine from, you know, a simple gold pan through basic metal detectors all the way to high end metal detectors and other stuff. Uh, if you need it for the prospecting games, High Plains has it. And uh, it, it, you can get a discount code with them. You know, if you order something from them, use the discount code Chris Ralph. It's C H R I S R E L P H in all caps, no space in between Chris and Ralph. And you can get a discount off of what you're buying from them. And then they have my book. You can get my book from them. Uh, and so they're really great guys. And I've dealt with them for a while. And I'm happy to recommend them because. Like I say, they're good dudes. So if you want to learn more about prospecting, consider my book, Fistful of Gold. And be sure to take a look at my uh, YouTube episodes. I've got lots of videos and lots of information on YouTube. And, you know, I oftentimes get people say, hey, Chris, why don't you make a video on XYZ, right? And it's like 90% of the time, it's like, I already have a video on XYZ. Uh, take a look. And so if you're interested, Look at my back catalog of videos because there's a lot of good information there. And we'll see you in the next video.